Portland, Oregon is a city in the heart of the Pacific Northwest. But what many people in Portland don't realize is that just outside the city is a major fault line that could produce one of the most powerful earthquakes in the world. Making matters worse, Oregon didn't have a seismic building code until the 1990s, and that means that the vast majority of the homes in the city were not built to withstand earthquake damage, and they're not currently required to upgrade their homes to meet that code. That means that if the big one strikes, whole neighborhoods of historic houses could be devastated. But there are solutions. Seismic contractors are working to make small changes to homes that can have a big impact if an earthquake were to strike. Michael, we appreciate you helping us out today. Wow, Kevin, I'm glad to be here. You know, it's, uh, it's always so cheap to retrofit the house before the earthquake than it is to deal with the aftermath. Well, we got you here at the right time then. And here is our homeowner who you've been working with. Hey, Tori. Hi, welcome. So uh, you're worried about earthquakes. All of a sudden you found out you are in the zone. Yeah, so we've been here about two years in this house and uh, after right after we moved, people started talking about this uh, overdue epic earthquake that yeah. we should be expecting. And so we looked around at our house and thought, what do we do? <laughs> I suspect you're in the, the same position as a lot of people who don't really think about earthquakes or know what to do. So we appreciate mm -hmm. your email. Michael, you've had a chance to uh, have a look at the house and work with Tori. What do, you, what do you think? I have. So I think this house is an excellent candidate for seismic retrofit. You know, we're trying to prevent failure in a seismic retrofit. We're not trying to prevent damage. Mm -hmm. So we would like the homeowners to be able to, to shelter in place and repair their house after and an earthquake. What makes this a good candidate for that? We've got a one-story house. We've got uh, good geology here. This ground is going to shake a lot less than the vast majority of the region. We've got a nice load path from the roof down to the foundation. We've got a nice poured concrete foundation. Mm -hmm. We just need to be able to transfer those loads from the house into the foundation. We want to continue that load path. So help me understand what's going on in an earthquake and what a house doesn't like about it. Okay, well, this house was primarily built to resist vertical load. So that would be the weight of the house, the contents of the house, snow on the roof, that sort of thing. Gravity, basically. Yes, and this is great for that. If that's all we had to deal with, gravity loads, gravity connection, that's fine. But in an earthquake, we've got the ground moving in a linear direction laterally, and so, uh, and we don't know what direction it's going to come from. So it's not this sort of big mixed up vibration. It's all of that energy in one direction. You may not know which direction, but it's all in that one direction. That's right. So think about it this way. It's like tapping the brakes on your car. Your car stops, but your body continues to move forward. Yeah, interesting. So in an earthquake, the ground moves forward in jolts or waves. The house wants to keep going. <laughs> Hence your desire to connect that vertical load to the foundation. Exactly. That's the big trick here. Right. Okay. So uh, you've got all the right things we're looking for. I get the one story is better good. than two. I like the good foundation. I like the sort of simplicity of the house. And you've already started some work in the basement. We yeah. have. Great. So down here in the basement, you can see we've got plastic up to prevent the contents from getting dusty. Starting to expose the bones of the house. That's right. So the way this house is constructed, there's a continuous load path from the roof system to the wall system to the floor system. Right now, there's no mechanical connection between the floor system and the foundation, and so in an earthquake, that becomes a weak point. To fix that, we need to transfer the load effectively from the roof all the way to the foundation, and to do that, we need to install specialty hardware. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install this shear transfer tie. And that goes? It goes right there from the floor system or the rim joist to the sill plate. Okay. And then we're going to install a side plate and that goes... from the sill plate to the foundation. So you want it right there against the concrete? Right there. And a screw anchor from the side plate into the foundation. Concrete. We're installing the shear transfer tie with 10D nails, which are specified by the manufacturer. They get installed with a palm nailer. We're going to connect the side plate to the sill plate with a structural screw specified by the manufacturer. We're going to drill pilots so that we don't split the sill plate. For the concrete, we're going to install a four and a half inch screw anchor. We want a two thirds embedment into a six inch concrete wall. So we're going to drill a half inch hole with a hollow bit attached to a vacuum for dust control. And then we're going to drive in a uh, four and a half inch screw anchor with an impact wrench. Yeah. 
So Kevin, the majority of the damage earthquakes is from gas fires, not structural damage. Not hard to imagine, right? I mean, you got gas coming in from the street into the house. This thing starts to shake. You break the pipe here. You break it all through the house. Now the gas is just flowing freely. Exactly. So what we're going to do to mitigate that is we're going to install an earthquake activated gas shutoff valve here what? at the meter. What is this? What am I looking at here? So, all right, so I can look right through there. Gas flowing through it, no problem. Yeah, well, I'll shake it. <laughs> so uh, when you shake it, the ball drops and looks like it just plugs it right up. Plugs up the gas, that's right. No kidding. Although I'm thinking to myself, big truck rumbles by, you got a lot of nuisance calls coming your way. Yeah, you would think, but fortunately that's not the case. But if you look at that dial, there's an arrow pointing counterclockwise and the word reset. And I do that, and no way, the ball came back up and went right back to its little seat. How'd that happen? You're back in business. There's a magnet in that dial that picks oh. up the ball and reseats it. Cool. And this just gets threaded on to your existing gas yes. main right here. We'll install it right here, between the meter and the house. First, I'll shut off the gas to the meter. Now I'll disassemble the meter in order to install the valve. So this is a relatively straightforward valve to install. I'm going to remove this three inch section of three quarter inch pipe. I'm going to install two nipples into the ends of the gas valve using um, thread threading compound. I want to make sure all my threaded components are sealed properly. Once I get everything tightened down, then I'll adjust the valve to make sure the bubble's in the middle. In order for the valve to work properly, it needs to sit level. All right, Tori, we've talked about addressing structural issues. Now let's talk about non-structural issues. All so right. you think about this in an earthquake, all of the stuff in this room is going to be on the floor and moving. That creates a safety hazard. So here's something that we can do to mitigate that. This is uh, it's museum putty, generically speaking. We can take a little dab of this, and by the way, this package costs about five bucks. We can stick this on the bottom of a vase, squish it back down here on the mantle. It will not damage the finish, by the way. And it'll stick to the mantle, prevent that from falling on the floor and breaking. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Tori, I think you're in pretty good shape. Wonderful, thank you. It's amazing how so many little things add up to make such a big difference. Well, you know, I think your house is pretty straightforward. Uh, a lot of houses I have to turn down. Whoa, you're turning work down? Well, we have a problem here with poor quality foundations. Houses built before 1930. Poor quality components and a formulation that consisted of a scoop of this and a scoop of that. Yeah, so I guess if it's not built well to begin with, it's harder to retrofit and save. Well, that's true. Those walls are just going to implode into the basement. Right. Well, thank you so much, Michael, and, and thank you, Kevin, for coming out to Portland. Well, I love being in Portland, but all the thanks goes to Michael and his crew. We appreciate the work you did on the house. Oh, anytime. Thank you guys so much. It's pretty amazing, all the hard work that they did to fasten the wood framing to the masonry, and all they used was some museum putty <laughs> to fashion all the little knickknacks. That's right. right. Well, that's all we showed you. Um, Michael and his crew also secured bookcases to the wall, mirrors and pictures to the wall. The idea is um, you wake up in the middle of the night after an earthquake, and you don't want broken glass yeah. and all of your belongings strewn around the floor. You want to be able to navigate through the house. Yeah, makes right. sense. Yeah. And if that house starts moving, there's a prime culprit in any house, which is a water heater like this. This is a column filled with water, plenty of weight. If it starts moving, you've got to worry it being top heavy. And if it does, it could break the gas pipe here or the water pipe here. So any time we're in an earthquake zone, you want to secure the water heater with a, with a strap like this to two or three places to just hold it tight. Wh which Michael and his crew did for yeah. us as well at yeah. that house. That's great. Yeah. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.